Better? OK. So if so, what has happened the last year? We cleaned up a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's, that's true. We didn't actually do much that is of your interest. We are still busy cleaning up the code base. It's old stuff. It's ugly. It's, you don't want to know about it. So the things you might be interested in at some point is uh, Panu has been cleaning up a lot of the uh, database stuff to get to the position where we at some point can think replacing Berkeley to be, which is a major pain in the ass. Some people who know what I'm talking about are nodding. Um, and but it's it's basically done in bursts. So you clean up something, and you really cannot see the code anymore. And then you have to do something else. And so um, there's the final thing that Panu has been working on. There, the uh, as a Linux guys are complaining about as a Linux not working within RPM properly because you kind of have to have the policies in place before you actually can write files and set the uh, uh, context pr properly. And so. There used to be some code in there to do it, and it was kind of ugly of mixing it in, and so he's working on some kind of plugin interface so you can do it in a sane way. But uh, I've, I've, I don't, I'm not getting it yet, so I hope it's get, I will look at it if it's finished, because it's all pretty complicated and stuff. I've been working on a product management is complaining about the missing support for large files. As you might know, we have increased the supported size of all kind of things over the years. And the last thing that's still left is basically the size of the files within a package. It turned out that the whole code handling um, files within RPM is pretty was pretty much messed up, so it took like three attempts to only clean it up to the point where you can think about changing anything. And that's basically worked for more or less a whole year. And we're getting there. As a re nice result is we are now getting and cleaned up API that can will be used also from Python to access the content of the, of the, um, of the payload. So you can basically loop. Yeah, you still have to unpack the whole thing because it's one big uh, exact compiled blob. But it's, at least you can loop over this and extract or look at files. Um, and, uh, and the second thing is, as we are changing the uh, payload format from uh, CPIO to something not quite CPIO, that RPM to CPIO won't work, into, will, not, will stop to work for packages that include files with uh, more than four gigabyte byte sizes, because there is no CPIO out child that supports it. And I've asked CPIO upstream, like, you know, there are these big files. What about adding support for them in CPIO? And they told me, aren't you the RPM guys? Aren't you the last guys using this shit? Go away. <laughs> and so I, did, I didn't really like to take over CPIO upstream, so I said, OK, we do something else. So, but I have written a small tool that will use its API to basically loop over the files and then using libupjive to generate a tarball or Whatever, it's still pretty basic, but if someone puts more love in it, it can be nice and fancy, and also packaging the, the scriptlets or whatever you want. So what about the next year? The packaging team have compiled a last list of RFEs. You maybe you have seen it on the Fedora list or some of the internal lists, and there are all kind of things we are going to do, and it is going to be great, but Let's be reasonable. If you're talking about the next year, the items on the list that will be accomplished are very small. And so I'm picking basically one that I'm, I have some confidence that they have a chance of getting in there during the year. And this is powerful relations. This is basically something I wanted to have for like ages. So we're talking about like four or five years. And there have been issues with some upper layers within the packaging stack, which I hope are going away soon. So um, what we basically do is we add weak dependencies. For those who know what Azusa is doing, that's basically that. The we will implement it a bit differently because the Azusa guys, they are in a bad position, like they cannot change RPM, and so they have to make it work elsewhere, and so we are closely working with them to get it cleaned up. It basically means that these are relations that can be broken. There are basically two uh, 
kind of relations, the one that will be installed by default, but will be left out in case of problems or the user basically opting out from the package. And there are some lower that is, I don't know, I would not have used, uh, added them if, if they are not already there. It's basically for UI stuff and the thing is, the, the SUSE Dev Solver actually even uses the, to choose the right packages to install. So if you have already a package in there that suggests one of the packages and you need this package or another package, so it basically uses this one that the other package suggests. So it's kind of nice. Um, the next thing is, they also have it in reverse. So you can make your own package be installed if another package is present. This basically solves the problem that you, if you don't have control of the other package, so this is a basic uh, um, philosophy within RPM, actually t that you can have third-party repositories and the whole thing is actually built around the idea of having third-party repositories in opposite to, 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 to the Debian model. And this sucks if you actually cannot add uh, requires there and get yourself as a plugin installed to some application. So this will fix that. They also come in basically two varieties. And then SUSE has a couple of interesting add-on features, uh, which is quite a list. And uh, in the problem that one of the problem basically that lead to postponing that no one really understood how they work, do we need them, are they sufficient for our problems, and what to do with them. And so, I took my time and now I'm, I think I'm, I, I know what we want. And we want rich dependencies, which basically means you can use Boolean expressions within requires, the weak and reverse stuff, and also conflicts. If you, have got some good, if you have some good use cases for obsolete and triggers and really understand what this would mean, talk to me, I'm willing to listen. I've not yet made up my mind to really go there and think it through. It's probably a bad idea, but maybe not. Okay, I'll, we'll, we'll see how we, how we, how we can, uh, how, if, if I can make this with this. So, th to the details, I think we will probably support and or not an if with if being basically a reverse implication. So it's a bit, so, so if you're really into Boolean expressions, it's a bit ugly, but actually there are like sev seven different ways of writing Boolean expressions and they all suck. So uh, that's probably what we're going with. The semantics is going to be basically, you stay with what we have. You have your triplets of name, flags, and version, which are basically matched against the provides, and we basically say, well, is there a match? If yes, then it's true. If not, it's false, and then you use the Boolean expressions to calculate the truth value. And the thing is, basically, the conflicts have to be false, of course. To there has not been be no conflict, and everything else has to be true to fulfill the requirement or to trigger the reverse thing to get the package installed. Um, so for the last minute, I have a couple of examples. So you will be able to do uh, ORs, something that a lot of people have been complaining about. So, we'll be, so, we, so you don't rely on both packages having the same provides. Um, you can do uh, um, dependent requirements, so you require something only if there is a, a library installed, so you can do some plugin stuff, so, so bridging between two types of packages can be done easily. And this can be used for language packs, so you actually can have a language system that works within the packaging system without any plugins and stuff. You just say, well, install the main language pack, and it will pull all the language uh, packs of all software you have installed and not that's on all that is available somewhere. That's something I wanted to have for long and time is over. Thank you very much. <laughs>